Good evening. My name is Larry Logan. I am the uh, chairman of the Ted Lewis Park Project Committee, which is a different name than the one that you had, Tom. So yeah. I make that. Uh, that's fine. I make that. Uh, I'm going to make that clear. Uh, the committee makeup is Kevin Bennington, Barbara Tudor, Bob May, Jim Edmonds, and Dan Coy, who is the Reverend at Crossroads Church here in town. Uh, those attending our first meeting were Tim Wilson, Amy Elsie, Tom Davis and his help, helper, uh, Arista Parsler, Terry Leisure, John Biley, Jim Edmund, Don Sherman, Jan Shannon, Bob May, Barb Tudor, and Dan Corey. Who are we? We're organized to help with funding to complete the 2015 master plan due to a lack of government funding. Our goal is to have a family kid friendly park for all citizens, but particularly for those less fortunate who lack transportation and the means to travel to Barthelmas or Mary Virginia Park. Current conditions. Number one, there's a lack of government funding. It's been four years since the master plan was established. In that time period, due to funding issues, very little has been able to be done. Uh, it's understandable. All cities are under pressure from a funding standpoint. We have currently $100,000 which has been earmarked for the park from the council. And we also have $10,000 from the mayor's fund, which has been earmarked for this year. However, due to the lack of funding for streets, etc., and recently having to cash a CD to keep things going, that $100,000 could be in jeopardy. What's a solution? A group of dedicated volunteers, those I've mentioned previously, are ready to seek donations from the private sector, from businesses, banks, national corporations, and by applying for grants. Circle Wealth, unfortunately, is considered to be a uh, designated as a lower income city. Uh, by 51% actually. The one positive that comes out of that is we sometimes can be, uh, have grants available to us that cities that are not in that particular case do not have available. Developing a market piece outlining the need and the costs will be very important to us going forward. Face-to-face -face encounters will be the key to raising the funds needed to pursue helping this park. We'll be set up through the PCCF, Pickaway County Community Foundation, as a 501c3. So that we'll be, uh, the donations will be deductible. And we'll send the monies to PCCF, they'll be sent then to Gail Spangler for payment. That's a situation that's already in place for Mary Virginia Hemp Park. As you can see from the attached sheet, that each of you should have three committee members here. The cost for the next phase is close to a million dollars. And in that particular case, it includes the infrastructure which is removing existing structures, water and sewer serv service, grading and some sidewalks. Uh, we would uh, be repairing brick columns, putting in brick promenade, and steps to the restroom and splash pad benches. The splash pad would be uh, involved at $185,000, which would be the largest expenditure. In the, well, excuse me, the hardscape would be the largest, followed by the splash pad. Playground would be $100,000. Now, the playground and the splash pad would be very similar to the ones that are here in Virginia Hand Park already. The difference is, it's in the what I consider this park to be the inner city park for the community. People can walk there. Mothers can take their kids there in strollers. Children can meet there and play. That's the key to everything we're doing as volunteers. We want to make sure that people in the city can get to a place to recreate. <clears throat> Through fundraising donations of time and materials, we need to raise significant money. And with the help of grants and matching funds, we can achieve our goals. Obviously, this will not happen overnight. 
However, it's been four years since much has happened. And what has happened, thanks to Don Sherman and some people who got the road put in down there finally, all the way through the park, and uh, some other uh, things that have taken place in the last year, that at least has been done. But we're a long way still from realizing the dream of having this as a really total family-friendly park. <clears throat> My request is this. As all of you know, things change over time. The master plan was adopted on August 2015. Since then, we have experienced a significant drug issue in our community. Among our youth, we've lost our theater, our skating rink, our bowling alleys. Frankly, there's nothing for kids to do in Circle Belt. Our community has been designated as a 51% population lower income community. The lack of recreational opportunities for youth and families in our inner city causes tremendous harm, tremendous stress, and tremendous issues for our police and for our community as a whole. Therefore, we're asking for basketball courts and a skate park to be added to the current master plan. An inner city park without these simply doesn't speak to the opportunities for youth. I travel a great deal. Every community that I go into that has a park in the inner city has basketball courts. Kids like to play basketball. I understand that when the master plan was first put in place, there was a outreach to the community to find out how they felt about basketball. It came back that it was too noisy, there were problems constantly, so forth and so on. And I can appreciate how people felt about that. However, at this point, my sense of it is that when I show you on the map where we would place these items, it might make a difference to how we look at it going forward. Also, at the time that the 2015 master plan was uh, brought forward, the road did not go all the way around the park which is back to where the railroad tracks are, where a lot of the drug and alcohol problems were. And as that comes around now and finishes out, that gives our police department, who would patrol it from time to time, I'm sure through the day, an opportunity to, to look and see what's going on and to stop anything that might not be in everyone's best interest. So my idea is that it's easier now to really control things that might be happening. I want to show you, um, and I'll address in the question and answer session anything you may have as, a, as a, a concern or a question. But what I want to do first is to just show you on the map here, and also the ones that I gave you, which are similar to this, just smaller. First of all, in this particular case right here, this is Court Street. This area right here represents the existing um, shelter house. This area would be splash pad playground here, and then there would be walkways that would go all around this whole area, which would be very similar to the walkways that are in Mary Virginia that are used so heavily. So this is the first phase of the monies that we have to, we have to raise. Those monies, as I said, would be about a million dollars, and that would be the area where that would be used first, and that is our number one goal. Our number two goal then is to make it so we appeal to particularly those younger people who don't have anything to do in our community. And that's where this comes in. This area right here is where the road goes all the way around now. Okay? It's currently blocked off because they want to keep um, the ditches need to be firmed up. The weather's been so bad that they're really a mess and we don't want people going through there at this point. But that will change as soon as things start to dry out. <clears throat> as I indicated before, this area right here is the area that would be our first uh, requirement in terms of that million dollars that we're trying to raise. This area right here is an amphitheater area. It would be a smaller venue with a covered amphitheater. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We have someone, and I don't know who it is yet because it's super secret, 
has come forward and said that they would pay for that to have naming rights for the amphitheater. Okay? This area right here, which is closest to the railroad tracks and furthest away from any kind of homes, would be where I would put the basketball courts. That way there would be, uh, there's trees here, there would be noise abatement, and of course at the railroad tracks, we don't need to worry about the noise from playing basketball. Then the second part of this whole thing would be something that has just come to my attention. And I'd like to have the gentleman who brought it to my attention to talk to you about that now for just a moment. And <clears throat> his name is Reverend Dan Coy. He's the minister at the Crossroads Church here in town. Um, he's a member of our committee. It was interesting, it was brought to my attention that he had a skate park on the back of a flatbed truck. It's a professional skate park. The particular units weigh between three and 5,000 pounds. It's not going anywhere. The only thing we need to do that, to use a skate park in this environment would be about a 50 by 50 concrete pad surrounded by a fence because both the basketball court and the skate park would be closed at dark. No, and that fence would be around that skate park and locked. I'd like to take a minute just to have Dan come forward and give you some information about the skate park. Dan? Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Matt. And Dan, would you say your name? Yes, uh, my name is Dan Coy, and uh, I am the person he said I was. I'm a new pastor at Crossroads Church here in Circleville. And it's great to be with you. It's an honor to uh, address our town council and uh, this committee and my fellow citizens. It's great to be with all of you tonight. And uh, I care a lot about kids. Uh, I have my own. I have grandkids that have moved uh, here to this great community as well. And uh, I guess coming here about a dozen years ago uh, with a leadership school that uh, came to uh, be hosted at Ohio Christian University, Life Tracks brought me into this town, and I began to stay here the entire month of July and become kind of familiar with the surroundings and what was available, being involved, and uh, just listening, uh, which I like to do, picking up information. And uh, as I did, a common thread was in a lot of conversations that had to do with kids. And that was, it was a great place to raise a family. Uh, people were super uh, glad that they had grown up here or that they had uh, you know, moved to this community because of its provisions, uh, kind of a laid back environment, but yet um, taking good care of their youth. The other thing I heard commonly through this thread of conversation was that we had lost, as described tonight, lost some of the provisions or opportunities for recreation and, uh, and helping our kids. And so um, long term, uh, I've been in student life uh, involvement uh, on campuses, uh, obviously being uh, a man who works in the church. Um, I'm in my community. I don't sit behind my desk waiting for somebody to come through my door, but I go to the community to find out what opportunities there are. Uh, it seems that, that there is a great opportunity in kind of restructuring uh, a park that uh, had been great for many years and then kind of needed some updates and didn't happen. Um, uh, as has been stated tonight, I do uh, operate a nonprofit it's called Invoke, and it was based out of Virginia. And uh, that board had voted when I was um, brought here into this community to minister. They had studied uh, across the United States and found that Columbus was a major hub for a uh, hipster community, or uh, what would be designated as uh, skaters and such. And uh, so that's, a, that's an interesting uh, geographic uh, study. But uh, I, I guess second to San Diego, we have one of the premier uh, additional communities now at large for that to come about. Uh, the the uh, extreme sports, as is now said, used to be skaters. Everybody called it skaters. Well, it's, it's developed into a $14 billion, probably plus uh, industry now. Uh, a lot of participants, the average age uh, in, in this field is about nine years old now. So what a great opportunity to get into people's lives. It used to be up a ways. But uh, as I came to this community, began to hang out, I, I went to Big Lots a lot for some reason. I don't know if it was just buying candy for kids or what. I was at Big Lots and over in that you know, neighborhood, and I saw something that caught my eye. Kids on skateboards. And they were on the sidewalks. 
Uh, they were in the parking lot, you know, around the cars and all kinds of things. And I immediately went to them and said, hey, how's it going? They thought they were in trouble, <laughs> as they normally are. Uh, and usually, skaters or people in extreme sports, whether it's a bike or some kind of scooter or whatever, they're usually in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, I, across the last decade, I've really been handed an opportunity because of all this equipment that was donated uh, in the community where I came from, and now has been brought here. The board that I operate with and invoke has said, uh, we'd like to, to uh, give that to that area now because you're there and you're influenced and you care about it. As we land, I have probably uh, estimated around $20,000 worth of steel equipment um, it's all fabricated to stand uh, very firmly. Uh, it doesn't move without um, usually heavy machinery and uh, can, can be useful. We use it as a mobile set, uh, but it can also be stationary. When I heard about this conversation, I said, well, uh, we could make it available uh, easily. Uh, and the thing about uh, usually skaters and that kind of a recreation that we would add is that uh, it's hard for them, We, you know, out on Tarleton Avenue, we've got a great parking lot and all that, but to get a, a skater to be there, um, he can't usually walk easily or ride his skateboard there, he'll be in trouble again, and or her, because there are a lot of girl skaters now, which is cool. But uh, we thought, you know, and we found that in, in the center of towns, wherever it is uh, kind of being remade, these conversations are happening all across the country. Uh, I'm simply here saying that I want to be a part of the solution. Um, it, it's not about me or the skate ramps, but it's really about the kids and helping them. And what we usually offer is mentoring and programming for kids in extreme sports and gaming. And so uh, that's part of my expertise. Uh, there's a lot of research that's been into it, a lot of involvement. Uh, I have sixth generation now in my family that's been making a difference uh, in, in towns and communities in the Midwest and abroad. And uh, as I already stated, I have a granddaughter and a grandson that now live in the great, the great Circleville. And, uh, and I'm, I'm happy about that because I think it is a great place to raise a family. Um, and I think it is uh, with all of its tradition and uh, as every community has, you know, things that went good and bad and all that, you know what, we've worked through it and we are working through it. And I want to be a part of that solution. And so however I can uh, give advice, answer questions. Uh, we do have a, a lot of options with what we do, but uh, I'll just end my little speech with this. Uh, Matt came to me as a young man, and he had been a skater most of his young years. And uh, we began to influence him through the programs, through the mentoring. Uh, and long story short, he began to ask for me to meet with him early. And it wasn't it wasn't just early, it was 5.10 every morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. And he wanted to eat breakfast, and, and he wanted to put a plan together. And that plan included his future. Long story short tonight, he is a company owner. Uh, he runs a great big business in construction. He has a fine wife and three daughters. And yes, he still skates and has a lot of fun with his community. has been on my board of directors for many years now. But people like Matt, uh, are, are right here in, in our communities. And uh, if we can be a part of that whole discussion, it's not just about one topic, but I want to be a part of the solution. And Larry, thanks for letting me speak tonight. Thank you.